One of the things that makes dealing with fractions a little tricky is the fact that we have completely different rules for multiplying and dividing and for adding and subtracting. Uh, with multiplying and dividing fractions, recall that we, uh, well, with multiplying, we multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. Um, but when, we come, when it comes to adding and subtracting fractions, that's not the case at all. Adding and subtracting fractions require what we call a common denominator. Um, remember, denominator means the bottom of the fraction, and common means that they have to be the same in order for you to be able to add or subtract the fractions. Suppose, for example, that we have one tenth as a fraction, and we also and we want to add this to three tenths. Notice that here our fractions have a common denominator, and we can then go ahead and add these together. If I have one tenth and three tenths. I add the tops to get four, but then I keep the denominator exactly the same so that my fractions are equally sized when I'm considering these as different pieces to come together. So it requires a common denominator. Once you have a common denominator, we add the tops or subtract because this rule works for subtraction as well. Add or subtract the tops, but keep that denominator that's the same, keep it the same for your answer. Okay, uh, in this case, notice that we ended up with an answer of four tenths. Please always take a time and check to see if your fractions can be reduced. Um, in this case, two goes into both the top and the bottom. So I can divide the numerator and denominator by two and come up with my simplified solution to the addition problem of two fifths. So as long as the bottoms are the same, pretty straightforward. Um, now let's see what happens if we have different denominators. Suppose that we're looking at a problem like three over eight plus five over 12. In this case, the bottoms of the fractions are not equal, um, and they need to be equal for me to be able to do any sort of addition or subtraction at all. How do you come up with a common denominator? Well, what we're doing is we're trying to find a number that we can multiply um, and end up with this, multiply eight by something or multiply 12 by something and end up with the same answer. My little um, process that I like to use is I always start with the biggest number so I'm going to start with 12, and I ask myself, does 8 go into 12 evenly? And the answer is no. So then what I do is I go up and I look at 12 times 2 is 24. Then I ask myself, does 8 go into 24? In this case, 8 does go into 24 evenly, and so I can go ahead and use 24 as my common denominator. Now, what I need to do, I don't want to change the problem, obviously. I still want to be adding 3 eighths and 5 twelfths, um, but I need these denominators to be 24 instead. So I'm going to create equivalent fractions for each of these. Uh, <clears throat> to get from 8 to 24, I would have had to multiply by 3. If I multiply the bottom of this fraction by 3, I also have to multiply the top of the fraction by 3. 3 times 3 is 9. And so I have 9 over 24, which is an equivalent fraction to 3 over 8. Now I'm going to come and do the same thing here. I have 24 as the denominator I want. I started with 12, so I'd have to multiply by 2 to get there. Um, 12 times 2 gives me the 24 that I want on the bottom. 5 times 2 gives me 10 as my new top. Once you've done that, we can go ahead and add the tops. 9 plus 10 is 19. And then remember, we worked so hard to get that common denominator. Keep that denominator the same as you come to your final answer. And so in this case, I end up with 19 over 24 as my solution for adding these two fractions together. Uh, 19 is a prime number. There's nothing in there uh, that will also go into 24, so I can stop. Let's go ahead and try one last example, make sure we know what we're up to here. Let's suppose that we have 4 over 25 and we want to subtract 1 over 20. Again, adding and subtracting fractions require a common denominator. We do not have that. So what do we do? Let's figure out what a common denominator might be. You want to think of something that 25 will go into evenly and that also 20 will go into evenly. 
I'm going to go ahead and use the same process I used before. Start with the largest number, which is 25. 20 does not go in evenly into 25, so let's look at the next multiple of 25. 25 times 2 gives me 50. 20 does not go into 50 evenly. All right, that goes in two and a half times, so not good enough. Then I go back to 25. Instead of 25 times 2, I'm going to try 25 times 3 is 75. And I ask, does 20 go into 75 evenly? Not yet. So 25 times 4 gives me 100. Does 25 go into 100 evenly? It does. And I found what I can use for my common denominator. So let's go ahead and rewrite our fractions with 100 as the denominator. Okay, for the first fraction I had 25. To get to 100, I would have had to times by 4, so I need to times my numerator by 4 as well. 4 times 4 gives me 16 as my new equivalent numerator. For the next one, I have 20. I would have had to multiply by 5 to get to 100, so I also multiply the top by 5. 1 times 5 is still 5, and so I have 16 over 100 minus 5 over 100. Now that the denominators are the same, I can go ahead and do my subtraction. 16 minus 5 gives me 11 on the top. And then, because I'm adding and subtracting fractions, I keep that denominator the same. And my final solution is 11 over 100. 11 is prime and doesn't go into 100 at all. So that's my final and most simplified answer.